I'm joined now by uh, Dave Hadfield from the Independent. Dave, uh, obviously we're here for the uh, the Leeds Rhinos sort of side of things ahead of the game at the weekend. Uh, how do you see this matchup going against Wigan Warriors this weekend? Well, I couldn't possibly bet against Wigan. I think they're, they're so, so strong and in such a good form they're the obvious favourites. But uh, people are writing off Leeds a little too easily. I think they they are full of seasoned players who've, who've been there and been in big games. Come out the other side with the results. If it goes to a close game later on, they've got the best game breaker in the game in Kevin Sinfield. Have a lot of things going for them as well. Yeah. Having said all that, I still fancy see Wigan. Yeah, people do forget the Leeds. They're traditionally used to being in big games and big finals. I mean, last year they were in one, weren't they? So they had the, the negative side, the taste of the defeat. So that might give them a little bit of an incentive to win this time around. They are using that as a motivation, without a doubt. They feel that themselves down last year. And most of the players involved again this year freshened up with one or two who weren't as been involved last year, which is always a good thing. So they're using that, so they don't, don't want that feeling again of going down there and uh, not doing themselves justice, so I think that will uh, that will spur them on. It's interesting that the psychology and things that teams use to try and motivate them for games like this, I suppose Wigan, they've got the fact that Michael McGuire is moving on, maybe they want to make sure that he leaves with a Challenge Cup success behind him. Yes, and also I think the Challenge Cup occupies a very special place in Wigan Hearts with obvious reasons, the eight in a row and all that business. And I think that will really mark that they're back in a glory era again when they win the Challenge Cup. So it's very, very important to them. It's been a long wait, 13 years since they played at Wembley. It's, uh, it's invested with great significance. So, uh, so uh, they won't be short of motivation. Neither, neither side, well, no, no side ever is at Wembley. Well, I spoke to Paul Deacon actually, and he was saying you know, it's a massive game, you know, on so many levels. Obviously, he's a Wigan fan as well. So, having won this competition with Bradford, he wants to do it now with his hometown club. And what a way to set a seal on your career! I mean, he might play another season, but it will be the, the obvious uh, late highlight of his career if he plays uh, and wins at Wembley with with, with uh, Wigan. But he, he's been an asset to the club. He's, he was a, a surprise signing at the time. It's fair to, it's fair to say, but. Uh, He's fitted in very well there with the way that they wanted to play the game and he's become an integral part of that side. I suppose when you bring in winners, you know, he has been used to being uh, successful with Bradford. It, it kind of rubs off on the other players, doesn't it, the younger guys? Well, it doesn't do any harm as well, especially when you've got quite a few younger players in the team and you've got somebody like Paul Deacon who's, who's got this record of achievement in the game who's, who's ordering them around the place. So that's worked very well and uh, I'm sure he'll go on to have a very productive coaching career there as well. So what about the battles you're looking forward to seeing? on the pitch, where's this game, game rather going to be won and lost? Well, the simple thing to say about Wigan is that if you want to beat them you've got to try and keep Sam Tompkins quiet but that's an awfully difficult thing to do, uh, especially from full back because he can come into the line at any point so you can't say that that's the area where we, we face a threat, he can come in anywhere, coming outside the winger, he can come in outside the winger and then score on the opposite touch line, he's just very unpredictable with his lines of running so that's, that's a, major, uh, a major problem for them so uh, that's first and foremost with Leeds and they've got to deny them running opportunities if at all possible but how do you do that without kicking the ball direct into touch and never giving it to him in his hands because he's such a great broken field runner he's bound to get opportunities to do it he's got to minimise the damage that he does The Leeds though, who do you need to turn on I suppose you look at Sinfield you mentioned earlier Damien Boyer yes. certainly yeah. has the ability and Jamie Peacock's made a difference since he came back earlier in the season from his injury layoff. He has and he's waited a long time to play in a cup final at Wembley so it's a very big game for him. I think Rob Burrow actually holds the key for uh, for Leeds, I think he's come back to his best form recently. They're always more sprightly, more dangerous when he's on the field. He's a difficult man to tackle, he gets in close, makes the big bend bend and gets them off balance and he can make those little half breaks which are the, the, the essence of, of winning at Wembley, you've got to make the half breaks and get the players on the end of them. If anyone's going to do that for Leeds, I think it's probably Burrow. Brian McDermott was talking about the fact that uh, I suppose consistency has been a problem this season. We've spoken obviously over the weeks about their form. Do you think they are starting to become a more consistent unit and we're seeing more from them in this latter part of the season? Well, not judging from the performance at Harlequins, no. they are. No, they were very poor down there. There's another way of looking at it, and Kevin Sinfield's just said that uh, because the league form has been so scratchy, so uneven, the Challenge Cup has been a welcome distraction for them. They've been able to treat it as almost a a relaxation playing in the Challenge Cup. They've, uh, they've treated it very, in a very laid-back manner and not invested the great uh, emotion in it that they did last year and it served them pretty well. So they've actually reserved some of the best form for the Cup and that's uh, that's the classic way to win it, of course. Brian McDermott's had some flack, but you know, to end of the, the year with a potential Challenge Cup <coughs> success, you know, it certainly looks a good season, doesn't it? Well, it, it, it all hinges on that game. If they go to Wembley and win it, it will go down as a very good season. If they go to Wembley and lose and finish up 
running fifth maybe in the, in the Super League, it won't go down as a vintage season at all. So it's on the knife edge of being, between being a good season and a disappointing season. Final word on Wembley as uh, an arena to play in, obviously it's got great tradition, it's, it's changed in terms of uh, the stadium, it's not the same place but it's the, the same name and it still has you know, magical memories doesn't it associated with the Challenge Cup? It still does, it still has uh, something very special about it. I just hope that Leeds fans are going to uh, respond by getting down there in numbers. Uh, Slightly worrying reports of the number of tickets that have been sold compared to the number that Wigan have shifted. It would be good to have Leeds there in as great numbers as Wigan and cheering the side on in what could be a classic final if Leeds rise to the occasion against the obvious favourites. Brilliant, Dave. Thank you very much. We'll see what happens at the weekend. We will.